Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joy and I help photographers through weekly videos here on my channel. And this week I'm gonna be talking to you about some tips for photographing the wedding rings. So first, before you can shoot wedding rings, you're going to need the proper tools. So you're either going to need a macro lens or a macro filter. So why do you need a macro lens or macro filters? The reason for this is that every lens has a minimum focusing distance. And for your regular prime lenses, like a 50, millimeter 85 millimeter you know 125 millimeter they're not going to be able to get as close to the rings as we're going to need to get in order to get the images that you're imagining so i remember getting super frustrated early in my photography career because i couldn't figure out why i couldn't get good ring shots with a 50 millimeter lens and that's just because the minimum focusing distance is about three feet away. And so I couldn't get close enough to get what I was imagining. So if you can't afford a macro lens, the macro filters are a really fantastic and affordable option. Now I have a whole video here on YouTube demonstrating exactly how I use the macro filters. You can hold them up to a lens or you can actually thread them onto the lens because they are a filter and convert almost any portrait lens into a macro lens. So they're really cool. So once you have your tools picked out, you're going to want to set up the rings in a way that look desirable and the way that you want. And one insider tip that I have that I've been using for years is to use Elmer's tack and stick to make the rings stand in the exact position that you want them to be in. And the reason that this is so helpful is that wedding rings come in all different sizes and sometimes you want them to be positioned in such a way that you can see the diamond or you can see the inscription or whatever the detail is that you're trying to see. So next you're going to want to find a beautiful background that helps the rings to pop. I really love replica surfaces. They have backdrops that stand up into each other. So you could bring one of these along to a wedding day, or you could use the flowers, the bouquet, or something like that on the wedding day. So tip number three is to use a higher f-stop. Now, for example, this image, you might see this and think, you know, very little of the ring is in focus and everything else is so soft that perhaps you would wanna use a wide open aperture. When in fact, when it comes to macro photography specifically, you want to shoot at a higher f-stop. So this image was taken at f6, 5.6 or higher for sure. I don't quite remember because it's been a few years since I took this, but it's going to give you the ability to get the prongs and the details of your image in focus and have the rest of the image really just fall off, as they say in the photography world, and get that beautiful bokeh that I know so many of us are looking for. And when you're photographing wedding rings, don't be afraid to get really close. I know that for all of the examples I've shown here today, I was extremely close to the rings and I sometimes will even crop in post-production. So don't be afraid to get right up in there and then crop a little bit to get that really tight look. That's what I like to go for. And I think it makes a really wow impact in the final photograph. So after this video, be sure to check out the macro filters video or a couple of my styling videos. If you wanna know how to set up the stationery and the details on a wedding day, I have you covered check out this video and I will link it down below. So I hope that these tips help you to take better ring photographs. If you learned anything today, hit the thumbs up button and be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.